Here is a tutorial of how you can get into Crow Pose, also known or proper name, Bacassana. So Crow Pose is one of the first arm balances you kind of come across in a vinyasa flow, in a vinyasa sequence. And it does require you to have a little bit of upper body strength, core strength mainly, but also, you know, you need to be quite strong through the wrists. So when you first start practicing this pose, it's going to hurt your triceps and it's going to hurt your wrists. When I first started practicing crow pose, I honestly thought there was no way I'm ever going to be able to get it. And it was quite disheartening. And I thought, I've been practicing yoga for a while. Why is it that I cannot lift up into this pose? And I kept, I kept at it but I also didn't completely focus on it entirely. I was building strength whilst carrying on my yoga sequences, keep going to yoga classes, keep building the upper body strength in other fitness classes. And over time, I was quite surprised at how quickly it came. Most of it, and what I say all the time, is it's muscle memory. You, with these poses, looks like magic, <laughs> but it's not, it's, cool. it's all in alignment. So a stacking of the bones. When you don't have that alignment, when you're practicing and you're starting out, you're not getting that alignment straight away, it's hard because you're going to feel heavy. Gravity's gonna to wanna to keep pulling you backwards. When you find alignment, everything kind of clicks into place and then you feel lighter and you can get that lift. So one of the main things when we're coming into uh, an inversion, is to find that confidence to commit. When we keep back a little bit, when we maybe have a bit of a fall of falling on our face, all very normal, we're always not going to be quite at that point of balance, that alignment, and it's going to always be hard work. When we can commit to it, and we can come forwards and we really kind of trust in the practice getting the hips up so the alignment is there. Everything, you will feel that flight and it's that nice little bit in between where you're kind of really working, working, working and then, ah, you just feel that little magic lift. And it's, you don't have to do anything, it's kind of just lifting up. Okay, so enough talking there. We're going to use a block and a cushion in the practice. And um, as we go on, we can remove those things. But for a starting point, if you're new to it and uh, you're just kind of getting the beginning flavors of the pose, we're gonna use them. But first of all, I want you to come to sit on them just like I am. You can choose just to sit on the block. You don't need to sit on the cushion and the block, but comfort, right? Why not? We're going to just, first of all, find this kind of magic alignment that I'm talking about. So, bringing the body to work as one. So you're squeezing everything in together, so you're really solid and compact when you're in flight. I want your torso to come onto your thighs. So here, I'm gonna scoot my heels in as close as I can, and I'm gonna puff the chest out, and then come as far forward as I can. So I've really got this connection here. I can feel my stomach on my thighs, and then I'm going to extend one arm, and I'm gonna extend the other. Now here, this is where the triceps come in. When we first start practicing crow, You'll be a little bit lower down here, and this hurts more than being up here, but this takes time to build towards. So we've got to go through all that graft first and come here. So as I said at the beginning, your triceps, you might already be feeling that. We've not even got any weight on them. They will develop, they will come. That's all good. So here, we're resting onto, not, not on the knees, but you're, uh, sorry, not on the elbows, but you're a little bit higher than the elbows. And then you're going to flex your hands back and you imagine your hands are now pushing on towards the ground. So we're trying to keep as compact as we can. Now, one natural thing that will happen is your knees 
are going to come out. Now you can start to learn crow with the knees outside the elbow. I really don't recommend it. It's, uh, well, for one, I can't actually do it. It's not how I learnt. And two, there's no natural progression there. You want to always, things have a foundation and they build up and you can do more and more and more. Crow is a gateway to many inversions. The version where the crow is, the elbow is on the outside, that's not going to get you anywhere. So you might as well start here. And it is possible. It's, people will say that's the beginner's version. It's not. The beginner's version is what we're doing here. So this is what we're kind of aiming for. Now I want us to come into this pose, but without the nice comfort of the block and the cushion. So the cushion's gonna come forward, the block we'll put to one side, we will use shortly. But first of all, we're going to find the squat. So this time it's just like we were doing sitting, but I'm on the balls of the foot, and I'm going to really find that connection here of the torso on towards the thighs, and then extend the arms. So everything is nice and compact. I'm squeezing the knees in towards each other. At the same time, I'm really squeezing the knees to the back of the arms and the arms down onto the knees. And just that core, 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 core is switched on. So if you go into any sort of inversion without an engaged core, you're gonna just flop. You're gonna feel heavy. You're not gonna find any lift. Core is everything. So, now the cushion is here in front of the face, just as a way of giving you a little bit of a comfort if you feel you are gonna fall forward. Personally, I feel it's distracting. I feel my face is too close to something and that actually puts me off. So you can choose whether to use it or not. I'm, for the purpose of, uh, of this video, I'm not going to use it so I can show you that it's perfectly fine and safe to fall. You're not going to smash your face on the mat. Don't worry. Okay, so we've come here. Now we're going to spread the fingers wide. Now foundations, you are flying and the only part of you that's on the mat are your hands. Now, if the one part on the mat is not steady, you're not setting yourself up well. So your hands, you spread your fingers super wide, like stars. And you want to find this kind of upward current of energy from the hands up the arms. So it's really bracing here. If you start to kind of squeeze the fingertips in and you're lifting the palms of the hands up, you're not getting that big surface area you need to find really good balance. So spread the fingers, really push into the mat. This is our first little exercise here. You'll notice we're already doing an exercise, stretching those toes and really kind of working the legs here, staying in this squat. This is, this is what we need to hold the shape upside down. So if we're, if we're struggling here, it's gonna be harder when we get up. So we keep practicing, keep holding this. And I just want you to lean forwards and push off. Lean forwards, push off. Now notice as I come forwards, my elbows bend. This is kind of like that chaturanga style as we come down, but my knees are stopping any further bends there. Push back off, forwards, off, forwards, off. Let's do five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Now we're gonna come down and just untuck the toes, have a little rest out of that pose while we circle the wrists. So as I said, everything's coming onto the hands. There's a lot of pressure going through the wrist. So we want to, first of all, strengthen the wrists and find that flexibility in the wrists, but also know that we can do other things in the body to support the wrist. So that means when we can engage other areas, and pull a bit of that weight back because you're bracing the core, squeezing and activating using those shoulders, you're not gonna be applying as much force down because you're contracting and holding it elsewhere. So just a little wave, let's circle it around the opposite way. Good, and then a little shake out, shoulder roll, and then forwards. Okay, 
Now where the block comes in, it's this is where we now take our little perch. So by coming higher up to start with, we've got less distance that we need to come forwards. And we're already getting those knees a lot higher up. So it makes it easier to get into this first position. Now you spread your fingers, remember that weight in towards the hands and just really tune in to feel that kneecap behind the triceps. Now your next little action here is to start to lift the hips. Now when we lift the hips, I don't want you to lose any distance between the torso and the thighs. So we're gonna lift, but keep that contact. And as I've lifted, my elbows are now that 90 degree bend and I'm looking forwards. If I look down, my balance is off. I have to look forwards and then come back. So we're gonna do that five times, just bringing the weight forward into the hands and then taking it back. So no flight just yet, just getting that feel of the weight moving forwards, knowing that your hands are your foundations, you've got everything and you're looking forward, not down. So onto your block, knee to the back of the triceps, spread the fingers, lean forwards and down. Two, three, four, and five. Good. Now feel free to come off the block, have a little pause, shake it out, and then come back to the next step. Or carry straight on with me if you're feeling okay. So just getting that balance back on the block. This time we're gonna see if we can lean forwards and lift the hips enough that we find the feet become really light. Now, this is what we want. You take it slow, there is no jumping involved. As soon as you jump, you're not really doing it. You're, not, you're trying to kind of kid yourself that maybe if I jump up, I'll somehow hold it. It's strength, it's strength counterbalance and alignment. So we're having the hands down, we take it slow, roll forwards. Now, when I go a little further, trust in myself, it's so light to lift one foot and then lower, and then lift a second and then lower, and then we're gonna come back. Now, you can stay on your block if you want to, or you can have a go seeing how it feels without the block. So it's the same setup, feet together, squeeze the knees into the chest, rest your arms on top of those knees, spread your fingers wide. Now, as I go down, my knees will open a little bit. That's fine. We don't want them to squeeze the whole time. You want to have the connection here, but the knees can be a little wider, just so they match up with the arms. Shoulder distance reach forwards and then here because I've got no block I have to lift a little higher but one can lift and down and the second can lift and down nice okay come to have a little pause take it out the shoulders and a little roll of the head just to release and just a little word of warning here. Crow pose is considerably easier when you're not wearing slippery clothing or when you're not sweating into <laughs> a lot. I did a hot yoga class, went into a crow pose, so sweaty on the, arm, <laughs> on the arms, my knees just slipped straight off. I've learned that lesson now. But you'll find some leggings in these ones, you know, they're a little bit slippy actually. And, and if you're not onto skin, you're kind of working against that natural grip that you might have. So that's just one thing to be kind of aware of, but we're just going through the foundations here. See how you get on this time. We're going to see if we can find a little bit of flight maybe in two legs. If, um, if it feels too much, still not quite, you know, ready for that, Go back to that first step and just lift one and then the other. 
So here we go, spread fingers down. I'm gonna lift the hips, look forwards, maybe one, and then see how it is, can we lift the second? Now when you get up, you then draw the heels as close as you can to the bum. Keep looking forward, press into your fingertips for balance. And then slowly, 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 come to step down. Now, that isn't an easy pose. You know when you watch people and they're doing it um, on YouTube or in a yoga class, they maybe make it look easy, but they are working super hard. But it's a case of when you do things a lot, muscle memory comes into play. You find ways in which you can engage, make a little bit more space, pushing and eventually straightening the arms will give you a higher lift. Your face won't be as low to the ground. It'll make you feel more confident. And you get it, it comes. I would say keep dropping a little one in to your practice as much as you can, but also working on your chaturangas, you know, your strength here to push. This is gonna give you a lot more confidence in your arm strength as you hold your crow pose. Let's just do one more together. So here, knees draw in, elbows, sorry, knees onto the triceps. Spread your fingers wide. Look forward, lift those hips. Maybe we lift one, then the other. Maybe we can lift two and squeeze in towards the bum. We hold five, four, three, two, and one. Slowly lowering down, taking it off the wrists. Wonderful. I hope, um, I hope that was useful. Obviously, like I said quite a bit, it's worthwhile you practicing getting into the shape, but also working on those arm strengthening core exercises as well will get you there a lot quicker. See you next time.